Hi guys and welcome back to 100 Days of Code with me Lily Code. Today we are on day 99. Can you believe it? Tomorrow the 100 Days of Code journey will be over and very exciting stuff. Actually amazing. So we're going to continue on and what we're going to do right now is install Axios to clean up this GitHub Actions file. So let's get going on this. So lovely. So we have our terminal here. And we're just going to do npm install. So we're going to use Axios in order to do our fetch request first, our HTTP fetch request. So you'll see how that works now. So we'll just npm install Axios. And once that's installed, what we can do then is install Axios from Axios. So at the top here, I'll do that. I'll just say import or sorry, import Axios from and we're getting this from Axios, which is now installed. So perfect. And then we'll create an instance of this. So we'll say const GitHub. is equal to axios.create so we'll say axios.create and then we'll pass in the object that we want to create so we want a base URL and this is going to be our github URL from above there which is our process environment file and then the react app github url so in our environment file we have the url for github called out so that's what's in there and then we'll do a comment and we'll say headers i'll just show you that now so we have our headers and our headers are going to be authorization and this is going to be backtick our token we want our backticks and in here we want token dollar sign and then github token perfect and if I just show you these so our github URL in our environment file it's just this here so we have our react app github URL and it's literally just the URL of the GitHub API that we can hit for different endpoints. We can hit it for different endpoints like slash users. So if we were to put users here and it returns all the users in the GitHub API that we can call back when we do our fetch request then. So we're just doing a different way of doing this now through using Axios. So this is the GitHub URL that we're calling in this GitHub actions file. So cool. Okay, so now I can do github.get or github.poster because we have this set up here. So I'll come down to our search users function. And I want my parameters. I still want my parameters, but I'll get rid of the rest because we're going to use Axios to do this now. So this was doing it with fetch. But now I'm going to show you how we do it with Axios. So let's see that in action, just so you can see how that would work. So I'll do const response is equal to await github dot get, which will run a get request of the with the Axios instance, and we want it to go to. search users and then question mark and our params so when we use the axios api we don't need to use Await the data and call it back. We don't need to 
get it and then transform it into a JSON. It already comes back as a JSON. So we can use it. So it returns as, a, as data and we can use it straight away. So we say return response dot data. And there's an items array within our data that's coming back. So that's what we want. For the single user, our get user here. I'm going to get rid of these because we want a function, a single function. Okay. So instead, I'll create another function here and you can see how this is going to replace get a single user and then also get the user repos. So I'll say get users and repo, get user and repo. So here we're going to say export const get user and repos and this is going to be an async function which takes in the login. So await promise dot all and this takes in an array of requests. So this will be github.get and what we want to get is slash users slash login. Login should be in. Login should be passed in as in this format because we actually want to extract the user's login name as it's passed through into the function. So we need to put it into curly brackets with the dollar sign ahead of it to say to parse this login that's coming in. It's not actually the string login. We want to use the value being passed in. So that's why we put it into this format here. And we also want to get the repos as well. So let's say github.get and here we want to get the users slash login again passed in like this so it extracts the actual name being passed through and then forward slash repos. Perfect. And then underneath here, so I just need to break these up with a comma actually. And then underneath these, we can return. So we want to return an object with a user, which will be set to user.data. And the repos, which will be repos that data so now in our user file we just need to clean this up so in here So now in user in here where we're making these two requests, we'll just make one request instead. So we have our user data, which is awaiting the get user params login. So this will be get user and repos now. And it imported it, so great.
and then here we've dispatched get user we don't need this user repo data for the time being because we're going to get it from our get user and repos function and then here when we're dispatching we'll add We've added a new dispatch function, which we're going to have to add to our reducer file as well. So I'll copy the name of this. So now rather than get user and get repos, I'll have get user and repos and we can get rid of get repos and make sure that get user and repos does what we want it to do. So we'll have the user action payload user and also the repos. So we will have repos as well. Okay, so our action file should be quite cleaned up now. <clears throat> excuse me as a result of these changes so which it is so now we don't need get user or get user repos because we have moved these into this single get user and repos asynchronous function that takes in the login and can do both of these um, fetch requests using axios in one simple line so that does all of this different information for us it, well it doesn't handle our 404 actually i see here we have a ha for handling 404 but other than that it's getting the user and it's getting the user repos so we'll get rid of them for the time being because we don't need them and we can worry about the rest as we go so i'll we'll just save So I'm just listening here. And now we're going to have a look at for a cell. So let's check out for a cell. Vercel.com Okay, cool. So we have this Vercel.com which is for running your code, for deploying your code. So you can deploy your code. And yeah, we're going to give this a go. So cool. I was just wondering what it was about, but awesome. Okay. Cool. Okay, so let's just check out our 
what we're doing here so first of all we will log in but we'll set up a account so I will log in with github here sign up okay okay cool <coughs> So I want to find my github repo so I'll add my own github account here. So let's install. Okay and here is our feedback app. GitHub Finder is what we're looking for. So let's just check out our prom. Okay, so it looks like we have a few errors. So user.jsx says dispatch is not defined, line 32, line 36, and line 38. So we need to make sure we are getting our dispatch being passed in from our context. Yeah, cool. So if I just actually pull that in from our context here by specifying that we want it, then we should have it. Cool. And now if I search for somebody. Let's check out our console here. Yes. Okay, so there is this stuff that we want. So let's go to our network tab here. Let's clear everything and let's search. Okay. Just to see if we have any more information in here as to what's going wrong. So, bad credentials. Bad credentials makes it sound like to me that our token is off. That's what that sounds like. So So let's just check our token. And I'm also just going to look here at Postman. So, okay, I have Postman open now because I did try to run the 
localhost queries on Postman online, but that didn't seem to work. So I needed to install it on my local machine. So let's have a look at doing that again. I'm not even sure what happened to it the first time around. Like I already did install this, but it never seems to want to open. So let's try again. It's very strange. Aha, look, perfect, great. So we're installing Postman here. Sorry guys, I'm a little under the weather today and yesterday. So still all exciting. We will be finished tomorrow. So amazing. Yeah. Radio. Okay, so perfect. So let's try our GitHub request again and just see how that goes. And I'm actually going to pin this to my taskbar so I can't act a fool again. So we'll, first of all, we'll just try our request to the GitHub API. So we'll say API, and this is a get request we want to run. API.github dot com slash users and I will just send this and see how we get on okay great so we got back our users brilliant cool okay so our general request is working but let's see when we add in our token I'll just try with our query parameter first of all. So I'll say search users and let's pass in a query parameter of Lily. So cool, we got back the people with the login name of Lily as well, so great. So let's see now with our token. So if I come down here to my headers. Yeah, at the moment we're only getting back 10. because that's our rate limit uh, at this end point. So when we add in our token, then we should get more. So, okay. So let me come to my GitHub now and just check out this our token. So we'll go to GitHub. I'll go to my own GitHub. I want to go to settings. Developer settings. Personal access tokens. Uh huh. And okay, cool. So here's our token. So let's regenerate this token. And let's give this an expiration of 90 days. So we'll regenerate the token. I'll copy this token. I'll paste it into our environment file here. save and let's see whether there was just something up with our token now so if I come back to my github finder let's actually just stop and start our terminal because we've changed the environment file so we need to stop and start our terminal so I'll do that and I'll just say npm start Uh, 
and let's wait and see when it fires up. And search for Lily again. Perfect, so it looks like our token had just expired, which could have been the result of there being a timeout on those tokens, so okay. And then if I go back here to my console, And search for somebody. Okay, cool. So when we visit their profile, we are getting a the loading spinner. So let's just go home for a moment to clear everything. I don't think we did get any any messages there, so I don't know, but let's just go. Okay and just make sure that we didn't get any messages no so our loading spinner is not going away when we get a specific user so we'll go to our user results page okay and this is mapping up for each of our users let's go to our app file for a moment app js so yes in here we just have our roots cool Where do we have our individual user and our user item? Here's our visit profile. I don't think this should have a leading slash. So if I save that, I think that's the problem because our leading slash is actually in our in our URL when we called it out in our environment file, I have that leading slash in there. So let's search again for another name. Now let's try to visit profile. Okay, so that didn't fix it. Let's go to our network tab. Okay, so. should bring us to our individual user. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just trying to figure out what could be going on here. So in our user page, Yeah, so we've now replaced our get user and get user repos with our get user and repos, which is doing our Axios request for us. So we don't need to import the get user and get repos separately. Here where we have our get user data, it looks like that is not being called anywhere. So I'm just trying to figure out why that is.
So I need to run this at the end here. So I need to say get user data and just run this function. Okay. Great. Okay, cool. So I actually just hadn't made that call to run the function. Cool. So yes, you could see that we had defined this get user data asynchronous function, but it wasn't being called anywhere. That's why it was grayed out. So we needed to actually call it in order to make this request to get the user and the repos. So perfect. Okay, cool. And now we can see here that we have our individual user profile. So lovely. Cool. Great. Awesome, okay. So So now we can go back to our deployment that we have that working. So we'll come back to Vercel here. Good, so I need to commit all of my code. So I'll just add everything. I'll open up my terminal. I'll say add everything, add git commit message, pass the message flag and say I'm getting user and profile data from GitHub API and push. Without the additional accidental hash symbol. So cool, so that's pushed up. Let's go back to GitHub here. check out my own profile let's see okay so here we go so this is the application that we want to add is it going to work seeing as we have two different pages here github finder so this is the project that we want to actually add so let's see So I think really for this to work, this should be its own individual GitHub folder. So what I'm going to do is just add it to its own folder just to be sure that the, because I don't think having the two projects in the one folder, how will I specify which project it is? So I will just put it into its own folder. So. my github finder and so I've just created a new folder call for a cell deploy and I'm pasting in my project which I just need to close it here for the moment so I can actually move it. Perfect, so it's moved there now. So now I will open this project in code. So here I will open folder. And 
and this is the folder that I want to open. So now I'll set up my new GitHub repository for this. So I'll come back here and I will say new repository and this will be called first cell deploy of github app perfect so let's create that repo so cool so now i just need to set this up like you would normally so we come down into our project here i'll just open up my terminal and then we just run the standard commands that you would in order to set up any application so i'll just close this over to make sure you can see everything that i'm doing here and we just want to run these commands that github give you so you can run them to set up your your project here so first of all we, we run git init then you commit so i'll do git add everything because normally you would do a git commit and do your first commit but we have files in there so we need to add them so now i can do the first commit on this this repository i need to branch just to say that we want our branch to be our main branch we add the origin of this particular url where you can find this and then we push to the main branch so perfect and now i can use this repository because there is no other projects in that folder on Veracell. so we'll come up here to new project so i want to import the project that we just created so here we go we'll import this so our framework preset is going to be react create react app and then we have a few environment variables as well that we're going to have to add so we'll add them in now Okay, so back here in our environment file, we're going to want to pull over some of those environment variables. So here we go. So we want to grab this React app GitHub URL, which is just the URL that you can hit to get stuff back from the GitHub API. So I will just paste that in here as our environment name. So that's the value and then the name is going to be the React app GitHub URL. And I will add that. And I also want to bring over that second one. So our React app GitHub token. And copy and paste in this token. Cool. Cool, and now we should be all set to deploy. So we'll just click deploy <coughs> and we'll see what happens. So there we go, it's just running all the checks. Great. Okay. So. Okay, so it looks like from that obviously it didn't work because we're getting a 404 error 
but okay. So let's just spin this up and make sure everything is fine, which I'm sure it is. So we will just do DIR to check where we're at. CD into our GitHub Finder app. Wrong file. So CD into GitHub Finder. NPM start. So everything seems fine. So I'm not sure what went wrong there, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so So let's try and add this checkly integration because it seems like this will help figure out what's wrong so okay so I just need to create an account here so yes so it's asking me what I want to do here so do I want to check on deploy to production to production and preview yes so tick both of those boxes this is the project that I'd like to check on. So let's hit start there. Okay. Cool. So now Okay, so let's just try and push something here to just see if this is going to recompile that first. So I'll come into here to my source components. Any file will do really. I just want to make a change in order to get this to push again and to run that build again because I think that should cause the build to run again. So... <coughs> I'm trying to find something that isn't needed anymore so I can just like take it out some housekeeping okay so there we go let's get rid of this for the moment and also, well, instead, let's comment out the div above because if we're not showing the public gists, then we don't need the tag saying public gists. So then I'll add and commit this. So this is just a code change to see first cell deploy again. Okay, here we go. So it's running checks. Cool. It, it, accept, it knows that I did that push, so great.
Checks failed. Okay. How can I see them? View build logs. Yes. Okay, so let's expand all. So just seeing as I thought I already added that integration. So I still don't really know why it's not working. So view domains. In the build outputs of your deployment. So when it built it, it didn't output it. Like, so that's okay why I'm seeing it, but like, how can I go about fixing it would be maybe a better question and answer. You can enable or disable the feature from the advanced page and project settings. When enabled, the directory listing will be displayed. When disabled, a not found error will be displayed with the status code of 404. Okay, so let's see if enabling this directory listing in the advanced page in the project settings helps. So advanced page of the project settings where are the settings so So we need to get to the project settings. Settings. Project settings, cool. Excuse me, sorry. Advanced. Enabled, awesome. Cool, so now let's see how we're looking. So what about if I reload?
what about if now with that enabled I try and redeploy again so now if again I come to another file and I just say test for Vercel deploy copy and paste this because I'm going to use this in a few different places so I'll also use this in my commit message here I'll add and commit this file I'll push it and I'll come back to my browser and let's see what happens here Okay, so that's after failing again. I'm not sure why it doesn't like this deployment. not really sure let's just try again and see maybe I did something wrong you know so we'll just try again to deploy it again and see how that goes for us so I'll create a new project here this is the same project mm -hmm. react is the framework Our environment variables are from our EMV file. So we have our React app GitHub URL. Which is this URL. So I'll just copy and paste that into our environment variables on Versa because it calls for them. And then we just want to add our second one in here, which is our GitHub token. Just, I'm not really sure. I don't know why it didn't work. So I'm just going to try it again. You never know. And let's just try and deploy again and see. Yeah. Yeah. So within that then we have our GitHub Finder folder. Yeah. So we need to tell it, we want to look inside our GitHub Finder folder. And our GitHub Finder folder is where our Create React app can be found. So now let's try that again. I think that was the problem. Okay, so we need a different name. With correct with GitHub Finder. Route. Okay. Okay, so that's just running. Let's see. I think that that actually could be a huge thing. So lucky I did go back and try that again, because if it's not going to the right folder, how does it know? And I had just forgot there was a subfolder within our main project folder because I created a folder called Vercel Deploy and then pasted my GitHub Finder application in that. So yes. Mm -hmm.
So it looks like we still have an error. Wow, okay, so it's running npm run build. So actually, let's just run this and fix whatever errors are coming up here and see. So if we run npm run build and that works or we get errors, we can fix them and then go from there. Okay, so we need to CD into our GitHub Finder app. And then do npm run build. Okay, and this is doing exactly what Vercel did. So we can figure out why Vercel isn't working when we see what's gone wrong here. So we got as far as this in the Vercel build. I seen the Daisy components, that that was all okay, Daisy UI components. So if we go back here, you can see here that everything was fine there and then we started to have some errors. So we can see what these are here, see how this goes. Okay, so user search, clear users is assigned a value but is never used. So if we go to our user search, yes, so this here is not being used anymore. We're doing that in a different way. So let's save, come back to our terminal. What else did it say? Arrayed prototype dot map expects a uh, reion. Specs, like just because that's broken over two lines like my brain I cannot read that what what does it expect I'm not sure we'll have another look here now that I've expanded it and see what that that error said because I'm not sure what that error was talking about. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Expect the return value from the arrow function. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, guys, uh, we're on the hour and just seeing as I'm, well, even if I wasn't feeling under the weather, I still will be jumping off to go off and do other things. But today I'm jumping off to get into bed. But it's been an absolute pleasure as always. And I'll see you tomorrow for the last day. It's actually amazing. I am just so excited and it's just amazing. It's actually amazing. I can't wait. So look, it's been a pleasure, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. And thanks so much for joining me again on another episode. Really appreciate it. Bye, guys.